earlier this month, viewers in Porter reached out to our KPRC2 help desk with concerns about brown water. Neighbors say the problem comes and goes, but over time, they say it's ruined appliances, uh, clothing, fixtures, and filtration systems, and they also have concerns about their health. They're reaching back to our Rochelle Turner to show us exactly what they're dealing with. She's live in a newsroom to break it down. Rochelle? The good afternoon to you. When we turn on our water at home, we expect it to come out looking clear like this, but it's a completely different story for residents and Porter. Sheila Stoll invited us into her home and she collected samples and take a look at this. This came from her tap. It looks like a watered down Coke or shot of espresso. All morning we've been asking people here at the station, would you drink this? And the answer has been the same. Absolutely not. Now she said this these are samples from a good water day. You can see that the water bottles here, they look like they have sort of a brown tint compared to this water bottle that hasn't been opened that looks crystal clear. Sheila wants us to test the water because she wants to know what's in it. They're trying to say it's just like a fine powder or silt or something, maybe iron, but it's got a oily residue. That residue coats Sheila's bathtub and sink. I clean that quite a bit. No matter how often she cleans. Because the hard water just like really damages the fixtures, all of that. It's unsettling not knowing what's coming out of your tap. I have a lot of concerns health wise. Like I said, I've experienced some health concerns. Now looking back, I could probably attribute them mm -hmm. to this. Right. Um, I've had to replace things quite a bit. The fixtures are deteriorating. It's very hard to keep things clean. On top of that, but she's questioning the $38.50 infrastructure fee on her water bill. We've been living here eight years and paying this is $6,436 a year for our mud tax. So about $50,000 since we've moved in. It's a lot of for money. For water that looks like this. Unacceptable. If you bought this at a store, you went and bought a bottle of water, you would return it and get your money back. I'd like to have that happen. Sheila captured workers flushing the pumps once again in her neighborhood, but she's frustrated. She says it's just a band-aid for a bigger issue. Why has this not been resolved? What needs to happen? What are they planning to do? What is their plan of action? I would like to know their plan of action. So yeah, so it's a murky mess. And Sheila told me that she has spent a fortune replacing her fixtures and even upgrading her water filter system. The good news is that after my story aired this morning, I did hear back from two water companies who invited us out to test what's in this water. So I'll start that process of getting in touch with them to see what exactly is it. Yeah, certainly things are moving forward. I know you've been working on this story for a few weeks. I mean, what is the water company saying? So the water company says that they are so sorry that this is happening. They understand that residents are super frustrated. Right after my story aired, Todd Brewer, the president of Infomark, he called me and he told me that they are working on a solution, but it has a little bit of twist and turns. So starting next week, the water company, they are going to be splitting up the community's water system into two different systems. Okay. This is going to allow them to change the flow of the water system. So it's good news that we're starting to see some progress because residents have been complaining about this for so long. But the bad news is that the president told me that on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, residents are going to be experiencing more water okay. just like this. And so he doesn't want them to use it. So it's going to be a long process. I'm actually going to be speaking with him on Zoom today at 1.30 to get a little bit more information about this process because it can be a little confusing. Right. And then we're going to be out there in Porter on Monday, bright and early, watching crews as they start this process and, of course, speaking to residents about what they think. So yeah. good news that finally we're starting to see some, some results, but now they're going to have to wait even longer before it's finally cleared up. Wow, they mm -hmm. should have that resolution, especially if yes. that's what they're seeing coming mm -hmm. out. That's and this is a good water day. I know you get, probably can't see it here, but Sheila told us that this was a good water day, but this came out of her tap right after that snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't look 
too good. No. Nobody would drink this. Even the president, I asked him this morning, yeah. would you drink yeah. this? And he said, right. absolutely not. So, yeah, so we're going to continue to stay on top of this mm -hmm. story and have more updates next week. Yeah, it's alarming to say the least, and we know you will, Rochelle. Thank you so much. Thank you.